some of those guys that, that are coming in from other programs that you're looking at? Like for me, it's Andrew Parker. I mean, you know, he's a South Florida guy, went to Kansas, coming back to his home state here in Florida. I think he's the one, you know, I think Keyshawn Helton is going to enter fall practice as our number one wide receiver. I think Parchment, you know, from, from seeing the practice videos, from seeing what he's done, I could easily see him – being number one at being the number one receiver at some point, but who are the guys you're looking for that are coming to, from the transfer port? Well, the I think a lot of people aren't talking about him, but he really impressed me on the first spring scrimmage. I'm going to say Jamie Robinson. Not a lot of people are kind of they're kind of forgetting about him. And Florida State has some really impressive talent. You know, we'll cover it the next couple of weeks at safety, but. He impressed me right away. I mean, he is a guy that is in shape. He's taking care of his body. He has a great chemistry with the team already. And so, you know, looking at him and playing very well, he was with the starting group day one at that spring scrimmage. Getting there, you know, and and learning that playbook and such is impressive to me. And he played well, and he looked really good in the red zone and had multiple deflections, and it was at the right spot at the right time. The quarterbacks never threw his way except for a few times, and Jamie played the ball very nicely. So, I, I think we're kind of forgetting about Jamie because there is, like you said, there's a handful of, of transfers who we haven't even seen play a snap yet that is going to be fun to watch. You know, you got Jermaine Johnson too, but Jamie Robinson is going to play a lot this upcoming year. Florida State has a lot of talent at safety. You've got Travis Jay, you've got Renardo Green. Does Akeem Dent go back to safety? There's some there's some talk. Maybe that's what's going to happen this fall camp. Um, and then you've got a Brendan Gann who likes to smoke your head off, blow you up. Um, so... And there, there are still guys back there too. So I, I still think Jamie Robinson is going to be a fun one to watch this fall camp and how impressive he, he'll be because you had a spring. He was with the day ones, you know, he got all that experience. And that's a guy that, you know, when, whenever you go to the Notre Dame game, uh, Jason, you'll see when you get inside the stadium, how, yeah. how, how athletic this guy is. He, he's a, he's an in shape kind of dude. Yeah. I mean, and there's other guys like, you know, Kier Toms, you know, there's a lot of other guys that Florida State is looking at. But I just I just feel like that's my one concern. You know, you've got Mackenzie Milton, obviously he's the big name grad transfer, but that's my one concern is relying on too much of the grad transfers. That's one one. I have plenty of concerns, but that's my okay. one thing <laughs> Mark Rod to be the voice of college football. <laughs> so Logan, I have another question for you. Mark, we're gonna give Mark a chance. He's gonna go eat his salad, he's gonna take a moment right here. But I got another question for you from a loyal viewer, TFJ Boxing. He donates money to us every single week. Thank you very much, TFJ Boxing. If you haven't donated yet, we'll take your money at any moment here. But he sent me a Twitter question. We've, I finally got a Twitter question that wasn't a death threat, so I actually like that. But those are fun. This is what he asked me. So he said, at the ACC conference on Media Day, Jordan Travis said something along the lines of he hopes that he and Mackenzie Milton get to play together at some time. The only position McKenzie can play is quarterback, whereas Jordan isn't named starter yet. He can line up at running back, slot receiver, wideout, etc. Can one read this statement as Jordan making a bit of a concession? Does he see a trend shifting towards McKenzie's leadership in the locker room and with teammates? So that's my question to you, Logan. Do you see Jordan Travis as kind of accepting the fact that, and once again, let's just say Mike Norvell has not named a starter yet. I don't think he's going to name one until a lot closer to the Notre Dame game. I think he's going to give both of them equal reps because I do think he wants to give Jordan Travis a shot. Do you think that Jordan Travis is kind of, kind of sees the writing on the wall? Maybe. I think there's going to be times where he's behind taking snaps and he'll be throwing the football. I just think – he'll be playing in a whole lot of different packages. I think you'll see both quarterbacks out there at the same time. That's what I would do. Why not? Screw it. And you got two guys that can throw the ball. Obviously, Mackenzie Milton has the better experience and, and, and doing that and better talent. But, you know, Jordan Travis really worked on his game. He, he immediately after the, the season ended was working with guys on the field and was running, was uh, throwing routes with them and having all kinds of seven on sevens and working with the new guys and coming freshmen and had a, had a very solid spring. And I thought he looked, he was the best quarterback out of the spring. Um, and you got to hope that even if there's times, you know, if McKenzie Milton is named the starter against Notre Dame, you know, you're still going to see Jordan Travis out there. If he is at the slot, if he's playing, you know, beside McKenzie Milton, that's a scary thing because he is, he was the biggest running threat you know, for every defense that Florida state played against last year. Last year, he was the leading rusher on the team. You're not going to be able to take him off the field. You know, 
I'm sure that, you know, with McKenzie Milton coming in, he's a big time leader. He does this. He is the veteran. I, I just got to see a little bit more. I think some people that weren't at these scrimmages, you know, Nate, me and Nate don't get along on this. Me and Nate see, we don't see eye to eye that Jordan or that McKenzie Milton is just, was just immediately starter, you know, right off the bat. He also wasn't at these spring scrimmages where I saw McKenzie Milton struggle big time. You know, he, he was missing guys, didn't look so mobile like some of the people were thinking. And he's just kind of has, you'll, you'll see when you get there, he kind of has a little bit more of a different kind of run. He's still able to maneuver around the pocket, but it's just not how it was before for Milton. And I, I'm, you know, he, he played well in the spring. That's a spring game. They're not going to go over there and, you know, sack you and, and demolish you. That's just not what's going to happen. But, what is Notre Dame going to do? They're going to send the blitz on them all night long. And that's how it's going to do. And I'm wondering how that's going to work with, you know, you take Jordan Travis off the field, who is going to be more mobile and able to get away uh, from pass rushers. Um, their new defensive coordinator is just going to send it on them. So, you know, I'm just trying to be more realist. And, you know, Nate never got to go see these spring scrimmages. And Dustin will agree to it also that, you know, McKenzie Milton didn't look good whatsoever in those two spring scrimmages. I don't think that McKenzie Milton's coming here not to start. But, you know, it's going to be uh, to me right now, it's it's either a two quarterback kind of situation. You know, you don't usually see that happening at Florida State. I mean, Florida State, the last couple of years, has been running practically three quarterbacks, it feels like. But I think it's going to be a little bit more interesting than than some people think. I don't think he was just here. Boom, you're, you're starting. But starting, you know, starting, but being Mike Norvell credit for not automatically saying McKenzie Milton is our is our number one with a bullet, and he's our number one starter. I will give Mike Norvell credit. And I, I really do think that Jordan Travis will get a legitimate chance, at least for the start of fall camp. I'm just in the camp that much the same way that I still don't think Everett Golston was better than Sean McGuire in 2015 when he transferred from Notre Dame. You know, I don't think Mackenzie Milton is light years better than Jordan Travis at this point because of the injury, because we have not seen him in over two calendar years. It'll be nearly three calendar years since he's played a football game come that Notre Dame game. I just think you don't bring in the guy. You don't have the guy who's on all the national you know, magazines, the guy who – the national attention that's come in here, and you can't and – you, and you have him on the bench. In the first game, as you point out, Logan, national TV, Sunday night football against Notre Dame. National TV, ABC national cameras, I, I just think you, you from a, a purely, I don't want to say political move, but a purely outsider move, I think Mackenzie Milton has to start that game. Mm, I don't think you do for one You're big reason. The first reason is you don't make the political move. You go with the best player, number one, because that's what you always do is go with the best player. Uh, mm. and, and he's not always the best player. He's sometimes – as good a player, but he fits your system better. But also, number two, if people know that Jordan Travis has been the better player throughout the spring, and then he let's say he outplays, which we're not going to know that necessarily, but he outplays McKenzie Milton in August, that team's going to know that. I don't think that's good morale and a good message for your team if you're just going to blindly start McKenzie Milton. Would you say, once again, I'm in the Jordan Travis camp. I love Jordan Travis. I think Jordan mm -hmm. Travis is is great, and I love the fact that he's somebody who's played in the system. If you're asking me who I would want to start, personally, I would want Jordan Travis to start. Personally, I'm still not sold on Mackenzie Milton. I've made that very clear since December. It's been perfectly made clear and been made fun of by Logan Robinson from Old Game Day. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, yeah. But, I've... but that, but that being said, I guess my thing is that. I don't think at this point, and I'm going to say the, the, those numbers again, that Logan loves when I say them. They just roll off my tongue. I don't think coming off a three and six season that Mike Norvell has the leverage to afford to start Jordan Travis. You don't bring in Mackenzie Milton at this point to have him on the bench. And I think, I think he's the better arm out of the two. And it, for, I could be 100% wrong. He could come out, his legs could be perfectly fine. He could, he could be 2017 Mackenzie Melton, like what he was at UCF, and we could be just fine. But we don't know at this point. And I think that's why this fall camp is so important. We could have the same conversation on Saturday the 28th of August, one week before the first game, and, and we could be blown away by what we see from Mackenzie Melton. 
or we could be highly disappointed. So I feel like we, we shouldn't read too much into it right now. Let's get the first week of practice in. Then we can talk about this. We're not going to know when they step on the field, but Mike Norvell and his staff should have a pretty good idea by the so. end of August what Mackenzie Milton can do. Were you in the Sean McGuire camp or the Everett Golson camp, Logan, in 2015? Uh, I was hyped about Everett Golson coming in, and that's what I think a lot of this fan base is extremely hyped about, Mackenzie Milton coming in, and things just didn't go as uh, planned for Jimbo with that. And I'm not saying that they're exactly the same kind of player whatsoever. Um, one thing about this, though, Everett Golson just came from Notre Dame after playing for Notre Dame. Mackenzie Milton hasn't played a football game in over two years. Um, and... I'm, and this is no hit on McKenzie Milton, but I think it's. I just hope it's not going to be a rushed kind of thing where boom, you're you're starting right there against Notre Dame, and you know, you know Notre Dame's prepared for that, and they know what they're doing, and you know you got to make sure your running game is good to go. I just think I don't know. I <laughs> that's why I think this this fall camp. A lot of people are saying that I'm crazy for thinking that McKenzie Milton just wasn't named wow. a starter since he arrived in Tallahassee, and that's fine. Everybody has their own opinions, but you know, let's remember that Jordan Travis saved a lot of games for Florida State last year. We understand this was his first time starting last year. Let's understand that he wasn't even planned. This was kind of like how Florida State put out James Blackman in 2017. Jordan Travis was the third quarterback on that depth chart uh, on that depth chart. And, you know, he had to play his first season after not having a spring and going through a COVID-19 year. It just, I, I don't understand, you know, you're able to now have a full spring for Jordan Travis. He's able to learn. He's able to be in that film room with Mackenzie Milton and do a lot of things. I think just a little, some people are just really diminishing what Jordan Travis brought to the team last year. And you're just, you're not going to be able to keep him off the field, but we'll see if he's going to be the starter against Notre Dame. Um, and I will say one thing. I will say one thing to Mark real quick. If you're saying the best player always starts, then there's no reason Tate Rodemaker should have started a game last season for us. <laughs> and Tate Rodemaker was our starting quarterback. I get it was Jacksonville State. I get it. I understand why it was, but there's no reason Tate Rodemaker should have been a starting quarterback. I'm not saying that the best player always starts. I'm saying the best player should start. But then sometimes you get to a position in the season in which the games don't matter. It's more about developing the program and the players, and you may make different decisions late in the season to say, Hey, we got a freshman here that's coming along in practice. We're going to give him a shot over the junior senior. You make different program choices at that point. It was game number three. It was the third game of the season. We'd given up after three games. Well, we should have. Really. 